Hi, I'm Lydia Chang, and in today's Real Science, we're going to meet three scientists who are exploring the solar system. Our final adventure in the galaxies begins in Sunnyvale, California, at Lockheed Martin Missiles in Space. Our reporter, Brandon Ortiz, spent the day with computer systems engineer Larry Mendoza. Larry helps design spacecraft, and he has worked on projects ranging from the Hubble Space Telescope to the Lunar Prospector. He gave Brandon a behind-the-scenes look at the Lunar Prospector in the clean room at Lockheed Martin. Hi, I'm Brandon. Today I'm here at Lockheed Martin with Larry. Hi, Larry. What do you do here at Lockheed? Well, Brandon, I'm a systems engineer here at Lockheed. Um, and what we do at Lockheed Martin and Sunnyvale in particular is we build satellites. Now, you've, you know, you, when you talk to scientific you know, astronomers or other folks like that, they use satellites. But here in Sunnyvale, we actually build them. Uh, we spend a lot of time building all sorts of different ones. For instance, Hubble Space Telescope was a project that I worked on for almost seven years. We actually built the Space Telescope and put all the pieces together here in Sunnyvale. In addition to Hubble Space Telescope, we develop a whole bunch of other scientific satellites, um, some of which we'll see a little later today. Um, as you may know, Hubble Space Telescope was the first of the four great observatories. How long has Hubble been in space for? Well, you know, we launched Hubble in 1990. So Hubble's been in space uh, about seven years now. And in that time, we had the deployment mission, which was when we put it up there. And we've had two separate servicing missions where we went up and actually fixed components of the Hubble, upgraded different pieces of technology, and made it better and better every time. One of the things about Hubble that's really exciting that we designed into it was that Hubble was meant to be fixable. So you could change parts as you move along. It's original, it's got to have a lifetime of 15 years on orbit, which we've had to design all of the systems for. So we made everything on it to be modular and, and interchangeable so that we can upgrade all the different parts in the different servicing missions. How do you keep track of the Hubble? I mean, how do you know where it is all the time? Ah, very good question. Hubble Space Telescope always has to know exactly where it is at all times, partly because it's taking these really accurate pictures of things in space, and it has to know down to a very fine degree where those things are. So on Hubble, we upload information on a regular basis that says, OK, you are exactly right here. Then the software on board takes that information and updates it over time depending on how Hubble moves. So if Hubble moves, oh, say, 30 degrees to look at another star, the onboard software says, OK, we know that we've moved exactly 30 degrees. So it's constantly updating those numbers. So Hubble always knows where it is at every single time. Are there any new satellites that you're working on? We've got several really interesting satellites that we're working on right now. In fact, I've got a model of one right over here, and I'd love to show it to you. So can I look at it? Sure, let's go take a look. So what is this satellite here? Well, this is one of the latest satellites that we're currently just beginning to design and build at, here at Lockheed Martin. This is called CERTIF, the Space Infrared Telescope. Now, Hubble is a visible light telescope. It takes pictures of things that your eye or mine would see. Well, CERTIF is a little different. Instead of looking at visible light, it'll actually be looking at infrared light. How is this telescope going to work? Well, we're going to put it on the back of a Delta rocket, and we're going to launch it into space. And one of the things about CERTIF that makes it different from Hubble as well is that Hubble goes around the Earth. But CERTIF is going to be what's called an Earth trailer. We're going to launch it out, and it's going to follow behind CERTIF in the Earth's orbit. So we'll use the deep space network to communicate with CERTIF, but it'll get further and further and further away from the Earth as time goes on. And one of the reasons is, is because the Earth is really hot, and, and heat blurs your infrared. So the further away CERTIF will be from the Earth, the better and clearer pictures it's going to take. The other neat thing about CERTIF is that if you want to look at infrared, the most effective way to do it is with really super cold science instruments. So CERTIF is going to be planned to operate its scientific instruments at 1.5 degrees. How are you going to keep the telescope that cold? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. And what I want to show you is this thing right here. It looks kind of like the inside of a thermos bottle because, well, in many ways, that's really what it is. What this is, is it's a helium doer. A doer is kind of like a thermos bottle. This will be filled with liquid helium. It's the only substance that we know of that will allow us to keep those instruments as cold as they'll need to be for the life of the mission. CERTIF should last for about three years in its current design state. When do you plan on launching CERTIF? In the current plans, we're looking at launching CERTIF at the end of the year 2001, which is a pretty good ways away. 
However, there's another satellite, a scientific satellite called Lunar Prospector that we're currently working on that's going to be launched at the end of this year. Now, we've made special arrangements so that we'll be able to go actually take a look at it. It's almost complete. Would you like to go see it? Sure. Okay, let's go. Okay, Brandon, we're about to see one of the coolest sites that you're going to see as far as satellites are concerned. What we're looking at here, we are standing in a clean room that's actually where they're building Lunar Prospector. And this is really it right here in front of us. Lunar Prospector is a mission that's going to launch at the end of the year, and it's, a, and it's literally a lunar prospector. It's a, it's a scientific experiment, a series of scientific experiments that is actually going to check out different aspects of the moon that we currently don't know. Um, we haven't actually been back to the moon to do science since the last Apollo team on a regular basis. So this will be the first mission back to the moon since that happened. What's it going to do? Is it going to land on the moon or fly around the moon? Or what's it going to do? Ah, good question. What this is, is this is an orbiter. What it'll do is it'll settle into an almost perfectly circular orbit around the moon for the first year, about 100 nautical miles above the surface. The booms, can you see these, uh, these, these long yeah, things the sticking out on each side? Right. Each one of those is going to expand out, and at the end of each one, there will be a different scientific instrument doing a different type of science. How are you going to get this thing to the moon? Well, we're going to put Lunar Prospector actually on a Lockheed Martin launch vehicle, which is a very small, very accurate um, rocket, if you will, that was designed to put small, inexpensive missions like this into space. So we'll put it on top of an LMLV-2, and we'll launch it into space. And then it'll actually go to the planet and then use a combination of thrusters and braking capability to go into orbit around the planet. What's going on right now? What these guys around here are doing right now is they're doing what's called ambient functional tests. We actually have to run through a series of tests to make sure all the pieces that you can see on there all work together as a whole. So in functional testing, they make sure that all the electronics properly talk to each other, that all the interconnections between all the different pieces on the satellite all work the way they're supposed to. In fact, tomorrow, they're going to move Lunar Prospector into what's called thermal vac testing. Thermal vac is where, once they've checked it out here, they take it and they essentially put it in an oven, and they pump out all the air so it's a vacuum-like space with all sorts of crazy thermal effects, because they want to simulate what it's going to be like working in space, because they want to make sure that as, as much of the systems work as much as possible um, that they're able to validate before we actually take it down to the launch pad to get it ready. Thank you, Larry, for showing me around Lockheed today. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm really glad you had a chance to come today, Brandon, and see Lunar Prospector and hear about CERTIF and just see some of the other products that Lockheed Martin is building for spacecraft. If you would like to learn more about systems engineering for spacecraft design, here's what you can do now. You can learn more about the Lunar Prospector by checking out this website, lunarprospector.arc.nasa.gov.